Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable start to their week. Tuesday, uh, been going at it since Sunday. Um, I'm so excited about the work we're doing at the Visionetics Institute at Master Fitness 21, Myriad Business Solutions, as well as the Visionetics Institute. And a couple of other endeavors that uh, we won't get into, but there are some major changes going on that I'm excited about. It's been a very long and hard pull, but we are nearing uh, the transition into uh, the next stage. So I'm excited about that. A part of that is be opening up some gates to more affordable uh, access to yours truly. One of the ways we're doing that is with the 30-day holistic uh, transformation uh, masterclass. And what I, while it's called a masterclass, it's a personal experience. You won't be sharing your time with anyone else. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one experience. Uh, but the goal is to get people literally launched into the, uh, the stratosphere of next level living. Uh, and it's a 30 day process. And I've been extremely successful with it in the past and I'm launching it again and i want you guys to be a part of it i'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that later but let's get right to it let's talk about the importance of unpacking your gift um whether you are a religious person or not whether you are a christian uh or maybe uh you practice islam or maybe even um uh judaism uh which are the three Abrahamic uh, laws from which you can get connectivity to the Bible. Uh, there are some principles that flow from the Bible that far uh, precede its actual writing. For instance, uh, the principle of the gift uh, within you making way or room for you. There's a scripture that says that your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. And it has lived out to be true. When you do discover your gift, you discover access. Your gift is access, but your gift isn't for you. And I want to talk to you because most people who are searching for their gift are searching for their gift to serve themselves. Your gift isn't for you. Your gift is for the world. Anytime a person asks me, well, how do I discover my passion? Well, first of all, you got to look outside of yourself. While you will be passionate about your purpose, your purpose isn't to serve you. Your purpose is to serve others. If your per if the purpose you're looking at doesn't serve others, it's not your purpose and it's not truly connected to why you have your gift. You can use your gift to serve you, but you're really selling yourself short. How it works is you take your gift and you bless other people. And in turn, you turn around and there's a benefit that comes back to you because that's a universal law of reciprocity. Reciprocity, which says that, you know, what you plant, you reap. You know, it comes back to you. People love to talk about karma, but what they don't understand is karma is universal and is multifaceted. It's not just when you do something bad. When you put out something good, it comes back too. You got to understand the dynamic of the universal law of reciprocity. It's an energy. When you send out something, it's coming back to you. It doesn't come back in identical form most of the time. That's why most people miss it, but it comes back in the same level of energy. But so, again, Benjamin Disraeli, who was a former prime minister of the UK, once said that nothing can resist the will, the human will that is willing to stake even its very existence on its purpose. What does that mean? When you get to the point where you are willing to finish what you start or die trying, nothing can stop you. You will find out that the mo the things that you feared the most, when you make up in your mind, I'm not quitting. People have heard me say this and they think it's just a saying because it sounds cool, but it's literally how I live my life. When I make up in my mind that I'm going to do something, I got two options. I'm either going to do it or I'm going to die trying. There's no quitting. There's no getting off the treadmill. There's no retreating. There's no running. There's no surrendering. People who know me know that's literally my entire mindset. My, my entire mindset is I'm relentless. I don't know how to relent. I don't know how to quit. I don't know how to turn back. I've taken some bumps and bruises along the way. I've had major setbacks. I've been down on my back. Never stops me. Why? Because I will not quit. Life is going to test you. Uh, uh, I've said this before. 
life will pay whatever price you demand of it, but life is going to make a counter demand. And most people aren't ready for the counter demand. So they never, ever get what they've demanded of life. When you tell life, I want something, life is going to say, okay, this is what I need you to do. And most people don't want to make the sacrifice. Most people don't want to make the self-investment. Most people don't want to face the fear. Most people don't want to face the discomfort and, 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 and the long-term uh, commitment woes. So they sit back and they go, no, nah, I just sit over here and chill. You say you want it, but how bad do you want it? That's the thing. Let's talk about unpacking the gift. Let's talk about unpacking the gift. Okay. In unpacking the gift, you have to understand how things work. See, most people are being governed by notions. Most people are being governed by notions of the beliefs that they've developed and built over time. Okay, so what do I mean by that? The only limitations you have are the ones you accept with your mind. If you refuse to accept a limitation, it does not exist. The thing is, are you willing to put in the work to conquer it, to overcome what appears to be a limitation? That's the thing. But only the, the things you accept with your mind. In other words, when you accept something with your mind, it becomes a part of your belief system. And your beliefs govern your emotions your 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 behaviors uh and ultimately your actions and your actions directly impact your results guess what happens if i have a belief it's going to govern how i behave in other words say i believe that i can't uh develop wealth or i can't become debt free because of maybe i grew up in a home where we were always in debt Maybe I grew up in a situation or maybe my own life experience has created um, a, a, what we call learned helplessness. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, and I've never gotten over the hump. So I've just accepted that I'm never going to do it. But whatever the situation is that that belief has developed, it is a governing factor now in how I approach how I deal with my money, how I approach how I deal with my debt. So guess what happens? Whenever something pops up and I say, okay, here's a chance to eliminate debt. But because I have a belief that I can't uh, uh, eliminate debt, then the amount of effort I put into eliminating debt is going to be reflected of belief. I may not even try, or even if I try, it's just a half hat, half 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 hazard uh, try just to say I tried. So that when somebody asks, did you try this? I can say yes, but I'm really not putting the effort in it. I'm really not committed to it. Well, guess what happens when I do that? I'm going to get results from those actions and the actions and the results that I get are going to reinforce the original belief because you can't have do something and get the results you're looking for. So what happens when you say, I don't believe I can do it. So you barely try or you don't try it all. Guess what? It doesn't get done. You reinforce the belief that you can't do it. And then you try less and less each time to you. Now, you don't even give it a second thought. You just accepted it as your lot in life. Flip side, you determine I can absolutely do it. I'm willing to go whatever distance I have to go to make it happen. I'm willing to go through whatever difficulty and frustration I have to go through in order to make it happen. So what you do, you sit up there and you put in the work. You don't quit. It, it, it doesn't come as quickly as you think it should, but you go back. You double down on it. You sit up and you commit to it. You're going through it. People will look at you and say, you're never going to get it. You're never going to get it, but you won't stop. One day you look up debt free. But it came from a seed you planted way back that said, I can get there. I am debt free. Not I'm going to be debt free. I am debt free. Why? Because the moment I planted the seed, it became a reality. It hadn't manifested itself yet, but it was real. Why? Because I planted it and my thoughts are the seeds of my destiny. Do you hear what I'm saying? The thought, my thoughts are the seeds of my destiny. What I think as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Whatever you're thinking is producing your reality, whether you want to admit it or not. Your thoughts are guiding you and pushing you towards a, a, a destination. You have to look ahead of you and see what that destination is and determine in your mind whether or not you want to reach that destination. Is that the destination you're looking to achieve? Is that what you're looking 
to, to gain or, or, or end up at. If it's not, you can recalibrate, but you don't recalibrate by activity first. You recalibrate by re recalibrating your thinking. Well, how do I change the fact that I believe that poverty is my lot in life? How do I change the fact that I believe that I really don't deserve to be loved? How do I change the fact that nobody in our family ever owned a business so I don't believe I can really own and run a business? You got to start exposing yourself to people and stimuli that says so. More importantly, you got to start training and conditioning yourself talk to match your desired result. So if I'm sitting up saying that my goal is to be debt free, but nobody in my family has ever been debt free. I've never been debt free since I was a certain age as an adult and got my first loan or whatever. And it's been on since then. Then what I've got to sit up and start saying is I'm debt free. A part of my, uh, my, um, a part of my uh, morning motivation is I'm debt free. Matter of fact, it's sitting right there. After I finish the grand of it, I close it out with I'm committed to excellence. I'm adequately sufficient to meet every challenge. I'm abundant, wealthy, debt free, powerful, relentless, dominant. I create, generate, elevate, gravitate, and I dominate. That's how I end it. And I may have some other things I say to myself after that that's reflective of what I just said and expressive of what I just said, but that's how I end it every day. And that debt free thing, I can tell you from where I started from to where I'm at now, almost there. And I, I'm, when I say almost, I mean almost there. I mean, all the, I mean, just just going at it. And I've, I've done it in a very difficult time. I've done it where two and a half years ago, I lost my primary revenue generation uh, mechanism and had to rebuild it from scratch. But I, I just kept going. I just kept going. I kept doing what I knew I could do. I'm not going to fold because it got tough, because that's a part of the equation. I don't get to dictate everything that's going to happen around me. I only get to dictate how I respond. But I'm speaking it. You got to learn how to speak it. And it's going to sound weird when you're speaking. You know, I'm debt free. And you're looking over here and you got people calling you every day. It's like, man, wait, a no, but I'm debt free. Why? Because I planted the seed and I'm working the plan and I'm working towards what I know is possible. And every day I'm taking a piece of it off. I'm taking a piece of it off. I'm taking a piece of it off. And you, you develop the mindset. What will happen with your subconscious is when you tell it what it is and what the plan is and what it what the reality is. The subconscious starts working it. Your subconscious mind cannot distinguish between what's being imagined and what's real. When you constantly imagine being wealthy, your, your, your subconscious go, man, we got it going on. It starts to think and attract itself and point out to you mechanisms of wealth, mechanisms of revenue generation, ideas about how to increase revenue. All these things come from how you're feeding your subconscious by the people you surround yourself with, by the things you say about yourself. Talk is literally the software that this brain, which is the most powerful supercomputer on the planet, will run. What program are you running? Are you running a poverty program? Are you running, running a mediocrity program? Are you running let's just be average program? What program are you running? How, and, and, and that comes from yourself. What are you saying about yourself when you're talking to yourself? What are you saying about yourself when you're talking to someone else? Watch what you say about yourself. We so worried about trying to be transparent and honest to other people that we're speaking our circumstances and claiming them as our reality. No, our circumstances are momentary. Our reality is what we manifest. And we can literally sit up and say, wow, this is a circumstance. I'm telling you something. When you get this spiritual thing down, when you stop looking through, through the lens of religion, which is a ritual, meaning you practice things, whether you know what those things mean or not, See, the ritual is absolutely useless if you don't know what the ritual stands for. See, the ritual comes from the word right. There's a right in what you're doing that is representation representative of a higher truth. So if you go back to the Bible, for instance, all of the festivals were literally a foreshadow of something greater. Well, in, if you're a Christian, that something greater was Christ. So when Christ came, there was no need for the ritual anymore. You get what I'm saying? The ritual is symbolic, but we are still in religion practicing rituals without understanding the greater truth. The greater truth is this, is that I am a part of divine nature. I am a part of God. God is literally manifested in me. And in, in, in every religion will tell you that, you know, even Christianity tells you that the, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Well, 
the Holy Spirit is God. Wait a minute. Hold on. I mean, you can't get around it. The bottom line is there's a spiritual element. Let me tell you what happens when you get out of yourself. When you get out of the idea of limitations, when you get into a place where you're literally saying, I am going to be connected with the higher power God in my life on a personal level. It's good to be connected with other people and practice with other people, worship with other people. Not telling you don't do that. What I'm telling you is if you don't have a personal connection, you got a problem. But when you got a personal connection, your personal problems aren't really problems anymore. Why? Because the mind of God is never stopped. The mind of God has the answer. The mind of God has already prepared the answer, sent the answer your way. Now you got to be able to really connect. This is where I, where I blow people's mind because no matter what's going on in my uh, world, I'm smiling. I got something going on. Why is that? Because I'm beyond the situation. I'm beyond the circumstance. And I'm looking at the manifested reality that comes out of the circumstance. Let me explain to you. My spirit is in direct communication with the spirit of God as a whole. So I'm not only accessing the God in me, I'm accessing the, accessing the God of the universe. I'm accessing everything there is out there that I can use to advance me to the places I'm trying to go in this world. I understand because I have access to a God that's omnipotent, omniscient, uh, omnipresent, that in that, I have no limitations because anything I want is there. I just have to find a way to connect to it. Now, here's the thing. People are always like, you're in denial. No, let me tell you what I'm actually experiencing here. So you're looking at my circumstances. No, 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 no. I need you to catch up with me. Let me show you where I'm at. I'm communicating with God spirit to spirit. I'm communicating to God spirit to spirit. Guess what the spirit of God does? The spirit of God bears witness. Hope. Somebody talk to me. Get, uh, and I'm not speaking, I'm speaking using terminology people understand, but I'm speaking a truth here. The spirit of God bears witness to all truths about every situation. So guess what happens when I'm communicating spirit to spirit with God and I'm looking at the situation. I see the circumstances and I understand the circumstances are filled with facts, but faith transcends facts. You didn't hear me. Faith transcends facts. That's the beauty of faith. Faith has a greater power than the facts. Doesn't mean you're ignoring the facts. Doesn't mean the facts aren't real. It means that you're not locked in by the facts. So again, let me tell you what happens finally. Because I'm communicating with the spirit by, by way of my spirit, there's a spiritual communication. And guess what happens? Even though I see the circumstances, there's something in my spirit that literally disagrees with the circumstances. And because my spirit man is more powerful than anything that can be manifested in front of me, I have the right to override it. Doesn't mean I'm not going to go through it. It means that it can't hold me. It can't stop me. It can't check me. I'm unstoppable when I understand. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to have difficulties. Being unstoppable doesn't mean you're not going to get hit. Doesn't mean you're not going to get knocked down. Doesn't mean you're not going to experience delay. Doesn't mean you're not going to experience setback. It means that at the end of the day, you're getting back up and you're still moving. If I'm still breathing, I'm still in the fight. Here's it, here it is, and I'm going to break down because I don't, I don't want this to be stretched out too long. I don't want this to be stretched out too long, so check this out. Check this out. I have come to understand that most people have not yet even unpacked their gifts. They haven't unwrapped them. They got gifts still sitting there, perfectly packed and wrapped and unaccessed. And they're frustrated with where they are in life because Things are always coming at them. And they, it's because you're moving according to what someone else dictated that you should be doing. And you haven't accessed the gift. The gift will make room for you and bring you. In other words, when you unpack the gift and you start walking in your gifting, doors begin to open. You start to feel a different way. The confidence level rises. Now you begin to act more boldly and you begin to move into places you were were. were, were uh, uh, suffering from trepidation about you were uh, apprehensive about moving into, but you're moving into now because the gift has opened up the room and the space for you to walk into it. You can see it better now, but let me tell you something. 
everybody has a gift. I, I've said this many times before. This isn't new. If you go back and look at, I've said it, I've worked with people with Down syndrome. I've worked with people with uh, on the autism spectrum. I've worked with people who have been declared uh, mentally disabled in other ways and learning disabled. I've uh, worked with people from extreme poverty. I've worked with people from uh, massive wealth. I've worked in every area in between. And what I can tell you, I've yet to meet a person who didn't have a gift. Most people simply are not designed or trained or do not come up in an environment where they're looking to cultivate the gift. Most of the people are put in universal standardized places and asked to perform on certain levels. That's why students don't really grow because you're not cultivating and nurturing the gift. You're nurturing a standardized idea of performance that will serve employers, but not the employee. You got to get where I'm going with this. So what do you, you got to sit up and access the gift. And here's the beautiful thing. When you access the gift, the first thing you got to understand is the gift is to serve others. Why are you here? Why are you here on earth? What distance are you really willing to go to live the purpose that you were created? And see, that goes to, and depends upon how much of it you believe. Do you believe in what you're fighting for? Most people are just out there trying to get a paycheck. I'm just trying to get this check, pay my bills and have a little fun. No, you were meant for more than that. You were meant to do some exceptional and extraordinary and phenomenal things. You were meant to change lives. Now, how many lives you change is irrelevant. If you change one person's life where you liberate them to do exceptional and great things, your life now is validated. Now, I think everybody will touch more than one life if they make up in their mind to do it. But you are here. Here is... Why, why, why God planted a gift inside of you? Because God knew that there would be people who would need to be touched. And you have people on this planet that the only person that can reach them and impact their lives is you. That's how important you are in this world. That literally, if you fail at your design, if you fail at your purpose, you fail people you don't even know. Not to mention some you know. This thing is bigger than you. Now, if you want to, to, to fulfill all the things that you desire for yourself, it's in there, but you, you do it by, when you serve others well, that's gotta come back to you. When you bless others well, that's coming back to you. When you lift up other people, it's coming back to you. You can't put out that type of energy and then not come back to you. It probably won't come from the people you are touching, but it's coming. Cause see, somebody has been blessed with a gift to touch you. Do you hear me? Nobody's left out in this thing when everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. The problem is most of you are not walking in your gift. Most of you are not accessing your potential. Most of you are living at the very minimum of what's, uh, of, of, of what's required just to make sure you've got your bills paid, uh, that you got this done, you got this. Some of you are in survival mode. You're just trying to make it. Other you are in that comfort zone. You got enough that you know everything's taken care of, but you're not really striving. You're not really pushing yourself. You're not even thinking about the next level. See, next level living is the goal. When you get somewhere, God designed you to consistently be growing. You're never going to reach your full potential until you leave this place. That's going to be the final stop. But as long as you're breathing, you should be growing. Why? Because the more you grow, the more people you impact and more effectively you impact them. The more effectively you impact them, the greater blessings that you will receive by way of energy returning to you. You've got to understand that this is how sowing and reaping happens. You've got to plant cultivate, nurture, do what you do. Let it come back. Reap the harvest, replant, cultivate. You got to be consistently saying, how can I be better? Whose life can I, whose lives can I touch? Look, I'm going to get off of here. I can, I could go on all day on this stuff, but look, this is what I want you to do. Uh, if you look in the description box, you're going to see a couple of links. The first link is for let me see this lighting is so bright but the first link is for book number 20 uh out of 24 25 is currently in the works uh but this is book number 24 it's called critical mass uh the phenomenon of next level living 
I want you to click that link and get this book. Critical mass in uh, nuclear physics is the accumulation of all of the necessary components to achieve a particular desired nuclear response or nuclear reaction. Critical mass in social uh, socioeconomic means and social functioning is simply the accumulation of everything you need to become the best version of yourself. And so to reach critical mass means that you've assembled, access the gift, work the gift, build and accumulated a holistic nature that will allow you to do the things you were designed to do in the first place. See, the gift is the first part. The beating on the gift and the craft and the skill to touch is where you shine. Most people who even uncover the gift never work the gift. They just go out misusing it. But the first thing I want you to do is click the link and get critical mass. The second thing I want you to do is click the second link and go enroll in the 30 day holistic transformation uh, masterclass. That's a personal, personalized one on one experience with yours truly over the course of 30 days, um, four sessions. Um, and um, a disc assessment, personality assessment, and a developed plan of how you're going to achieve the thing in life that you want the most. Uh, it's going to get you started because most people are stuck on stop. And they're trying to figure out how to get going. They're trying to figure out how to make it and they don't know. We're going to get you started. That's the biggest thing. Get you started, get you trained, get your mind focused, work on your self-talk, work on how you wake up in the morning, work on how you go to bed at night, and then move you forward. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Don't forget, click both of those links and take action. That's the beginning of change. Change starts here. As I always say, I'm going to live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. My challenge is that you do the same. On that note, I am out of here.